What is up Stack and Ohana? This is Aloha Stacker and welcome back to the channel and another video. And in today's video, it is History Monday and we are bringing you a Silver Roman Denarius courtesy of Emperor Hadrian. And we're going to talk about Hadrian and Hadrian's Wall as well. But before we get started to the history, we're going to show off a quick piece of channel mail that came in. And first we got a couple new stickers from our friend Steeler Stacker. Check out his new sticker. Now this is a pretty awesome logo. Steeler Stacker 2021. He updated his logo. It looks phenomenal. Look at that. That looks amazing. I have to say that is pretty badass. So that's pretty cool. So check out Steeler Stacker's channel. It'll be linked in the description. He also sent me a nice note. He wrote, hey, hey, what's up, my friend? I got a new logo and I wanted to, I wanted you to have them. Hope all is well with you and you're doing good. Stay safe and take care. Steeler Stacker. So thank you, my friend. We will leave these in the background during the video. So thank you, my friend. So let's go ahead and talk about Hadrian's. Let's go ahead and talk about this coin that comes in this beautiful box. So let's take a look. So we're going to open this up. Pull that out. Look at this thing. This is absolutely gorgeous. Can't complain about a beautiful case like this. Let's get this out of the way. Check out this beautiful box. Look at that. That is phenomenal. Beautiful piece of wood right here. Beautiful representation. So check it out. Here we go. Go ahead and pull this out. And there she is, my friends. Let's go ahead and zoom. All right, check that out. That is a Roman denarius from the time of Emperor Hadrian, right there. Check that out. I'll get, I'll get this out of the case, show it to you. I don't like how they do this because they should show, they should have a picture where they show the back, but now I gotta pull the whole coin out and show it this way, but that's cool. This coin is awesome. Look at this thing. This is a silver Roman denarius from the time of Emperor Hadrian that I'm holding in my hand. No gloves for this one. I wanna hold the history. Nothing blocking it. Look at that. That is absolutely phenomenal. So what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to put that coin right here so you can see it. We're going to go ahead and take a look at it. Well, you can't really see it while we're talking about the card. So it says Hadrian's Britannia, a silver denarius of the Roman emperor who built Hadrian's Wall. Now i got a whole nice history on Hadrian's Wall. I'm going to show you in a little bit. Let's go ahead and read what it says. Julius Caesar sent the first Roman troops to the Isle in 55 BCE. Claudius established it as a province a century later, and many a future emperor first fought along its distant shores, but no Roman emperor is more associated with Britannia than Hadrian. The mighty wall that bears his name stretched from the Tin, North Sea, to the Selway, Irish Sea, marking the northern border of the empire. So, born in Spain in 76 CE, Hadrian ascended to the throne upon the death of Trajan in 117, 117. Part military man, part philosopher king, the new emperor toured the length and breadth of his empire, establishing order, drilling troops, engaging in battle, famously crushing a Jewish revolt in Palestine in 130, 130. He is considered one of the five good emperors. A devotee of ancient Greece, he pushed for Athens to be the cultural capital of the empire, construction many opulent buildings there. In Rome, he rebuilt the famed Pantheon with its distinctively Hellenistic look. His administration of all things Greek extended to his personal Rentun, or retin retinue. <laughs> he took as a companion a commonly Grecian boy named Antinous. Antinous. When the youth drowned in 130, the emperor was so distraught he defiled, or defied the boy, or deified, sorry, deified the boy, an unprecedented move for individuals outside the royal family. Now here's a picture of where Hadrian's Wall was at. For his many accomplishments, Hadrian's Wall is his greatest legacy, stretching 80 Roman miles from coast to coast. The wall itself was 8 feet high and 15 feet Eight, eight, hold on. It was eight feet wide and 15 feet high. Garrisons called mile castles were built every mile to quarter troops, and towers were placed every third of a mile. The finished wall was covered in white plaster and then whitewashed, so the massive fortification gleamed in the sun. While there is some, while there is some doubt of the wall's necessity in repelling the Picts from invading from the north, the effort was by and large successful. Its ruins remain Northern England's most popular tourist attraction, and there's a Nice map of the location of Hadrian's Wall. This is a certificate of authenticity for the history of the denarius. First minted in the Punic Wars of 211 BCE, the silver denarius was, for centuries, the most common coin circulating in the Roman Empire. One denarius was worth ten asses, <laughs> as in as and as being an old copper coin then in use. The word translates to counting ten and is the root of the word dinar. The original issue had an average weight of 1 48th of a Roman pound, but during the centuries, financial necessity and imperial depravity led to the debasement of the coin. Sound familiar, everyone? Caesar Augustus was the first to debase the denarius, and subsequent emperors followed by his lead. By the time of Claudius II, Gothicus, 268-270 CEE, a silver denarius contained a mere 0.02% silver. 
The denarius was replaced by the Antoninus in the mid third century. Uh, the weight is 2.6 to 3.1 grams, diameter 17.3 to 19 millimeters. This is guaranteed genuine by an ANA member and some information there. So pretty cool stuff. So let's go ahead and drop that there so you can see. Let's go back and show the coin one more time. Check that out, very cool. So we got a picture of Hadrian himself on the, on the front of the coin. I have no idea what the words say there. And then on the back, looks like we just have just a, I don't, I don't know, who knows what that is. I don't know what it is, but it's, it's cool. And this is an actual silver denarius because this was before the time that they decided to start getting rid of it. So let me see. Does it say anything here? It just says 2.6 to 3.1 to grams of silver. So these were still when it was still mostly silver. So that's pretty cool. And this coin is old, right? It's an old coin. So this was done, you know, he was born in 76 CE and he was, uh, and he took the throne in 117. So this coin actually, it was made in 117 AD. So this is now my oldest coin that I own because I think the last one I showed you, the bronze one, was much older. So what I'm gonna do real quick is I'm gonna go ahead and, because I'm gonna read about Hadrian's Wall. I want you to see a picture of Hadrian's Wall. Let's see if we can get that in there. There's Hadrian's Wall right there. So nice map. Let's see, we'll go put that there and we'll put the Daenerys on the side of it so you can enjoy the Daenerys and the wall. And let's talk about Hadrian's Wall. Let's go ahead and talk about the history. So, here we go. Hadrian's Wall is the remains of stone fortifications built by the Roman Empire following its conquest of Britain in the second century AD. The original structure stretched from more than 70 miles across northern English countryside from the River Tin near the city of Newcastle and the North Sea, west to the Irish Sea. Hadrian's Wall included a number of forts as well as a ditch designed to protect against invading troops. The remnants of the stone wall are still visible in many places. Contrary to popular belief, Hadrian's Wall does not nor ever nor has it ever served as a border between England and Scotland, two of the four countries that make up the United Kingdom. However, it does hold significance as a UNESCO World Heritage Site and major tourist attraction. The Romans first attempted to invade the island known as Britain in 55 BC, while under the rule of Emperor Julius Caesar. Although Caesar's military maneuver was unsuccessful, the armies of the Roman Empire again made the move to conquer the island, which was populated and governed by various Celtic tribes, or Celtic tribes, at the order of Emperor Claudius in 43 AD. Claudius sent Aulus Plautius and some 24,000 soldiers to Britain, and by 79 AD, they had gained control of the territory which makes up Wales and southern England. However, they were still meeting fierce resistance from the Celtic warriors in what is now northern England. Under the rule of Emperor Vespian, Vespasian, the Romans desperately wanted the region now known as Scotland to be part of their growing empire. However, the Scottish fighters, known as Caledonians, fought steadfastly. It wasn't until Roman soldiers under the leadership of Julius Agricola defeated the Caledonians, killing some 30,000 in 81 AD that the empire could consider at least part of Scotland under its control. Still, the Caledonians who survived Agricola's onslaught fled into the hills and remained stubborn opponents of the Romans. Over the ensuing decades, Caledonians continued to be troublesome, mounting numerous attacks at the northern outpost of the empire. By the time Emperor Hadrian came to power in 117 AD, the Romans no longer sought to expand their territory. Instead, they wanted to protect what they had from the Caledonians and others. Under Hadrian's orders, the Roman governors of Britain began building the wall that would later be named for the emperor to defend the part of Britain they controlled from attack. In Hadrian's words, they wanted to separate Romans from the barbarians to the north. Scholars believe that the wall may have also served as a means of restricting immigration and smuggling in and out of Roman territory. Hadrian's Wall is located near the border between modern-day Scotland and England. It runs in an east-west direction from Walsend and Newcastle on the River Ten in the east, traveling about 73 miles to Bonus on Solway on Solway Firth. The wall took at least six years to complete. Construction started at the east end and moved westward. The work was completed by Roman soldiers. Historians believe the original plan was to build a wall of stone or turf fronted by a wide, deep ditch. The wall would feature a guardian gate every mile with two observation towers between each gate. Ultimately, 14 forts were added to the wall and were augmented by an earthwork known as the Vallum to the south. It is essentially a large mound designed to serve as another defensive bulwark. Of all these structures, only a portion of the original wall and Vallum remain. Although the path to Hadrian's Wall skirts what is now the border between England and Scotland in some places, the wall is a substantial distance from the modern borderline in others. Thus, it has never served a role in the drawing of present-day border. Despite the significant undertaking in its construction, Hadrian's successor as Roman head of state, Antoninus, Antoninus Pius, abandoned the wall following the, former, the former's death in 138 AD. Under Antoninus orders, Roman soldiers began building a new wall some 100 miles to the north in what is now southern Scotland. This became known as the Antonine, or the Antonine Wall. It was made of turf and was roughly half the length of Hadrian's Wall, although it featured more forts than its predecessor. 
Like the emperors before him, Antoninus was never able to truly defeat the northern tribes, and the construction of the Antonine Wall was ultimately abandoned as well. The portion of Hadrian's Wall remains standing today has largely been attributed to the work of John Clayton, an official in the city government of Newcastle and antiqui an antiquity scholar in the 19th century. To prevent area farmers from removing stones in the original wall to build homes and or roads, Clayton began buying up the surrounding land. He started farms on the land and used proceeds from these farms to fund restoration of Hadrian's Wall. Although much of the land was lost after Clayton's death in 1890, the National Trust of the United Kingdom, a conservation organization, began requiring it piecemeal in the 20th century. Hadrian's Wall was, a, was named a UNESCO World Heritage Site in 1987. It remains unguarded, meaning tourists visiting the site have unfettered access despite concerns over damage. More recently, when London hosted the Summer Olympics in 2012, Hadrian's Wall was part of an art installation called Connecting Light. A Hadrian's Wall Walk remains a popular tourist activity, and the wall was included in the Guardian's Where to Go in 2017 list. A visitor center explaining the historic significance on its site is reportedly in the works. It may already be done. This article is fairly old. This article is... Uh, courtesy of history.com. So that is it, my friends. That is Hadrian's Wall and a, and a Roman Emperor Hadrian Silver Denarius from sometime between 117 AD and 130 AD or 138 AD. So this coin is in itself almost 2,000 years old. And that is phenomenal. I get to hold a piece of silver in my hand that is almost 2,000 years old. And who knows where it's been, who's held it, where, I don't know. I just think the history behind it is absolutely stunning, and it's in pretty good condition. Can you still make out his face? He's still got some hair follicles in there. You can see <laughs> some hair lines and a really cool picture. So this was History Monday, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. This is one of my last uh, three or four videos that are going to come out, or my last three videos that are going to come out before I take a hiatus for my move. So I wanted to make sure that I got this one in. I got one more history video, and then I have a nice gold and platinum video coming. Uh, please join me for those. But for this one, thank you very much for coming. I hope to see you on the next video. And this is it. You guys have a wonderful week, and I will see you on Wednesday or Friday. So with that, I say aloha and mahalo.